The large intestine is the last major portion of the digestive tract. It is located in the lower abdominal region. We can see it surrounds the small intestine. We'll look at the large intestine in more detail. It has an average diameter of about 5 centimeters. This is wider than the small intestine, which has an average diameter of about 2.5 to 3 centimeters. It is called the large intestine because of its larger diameter. And if we were to draw a line through its entire length, it would be approximately 1.5 meters. This is a lot shorter than the small intestine, which is about 7 meters long. Now we'll look at some of the parts of the large intestine and the lower section of the digestive tract. A short, thin extension on the bottom right of the large intestine is the appendix. It is sometimes called the veriform appendix. The word veriform means it resembles a worm. People are not sure what the function of the appendix is, or even if it has a function. An infection of the appendix is called appendicitis. The cecum is a pouch near the bottom right of the large intestine. This is where digested food enters the large intestine. Digested food in the ascending colon ascends or moves upward. The transverse colon is the top part of the large intestine, which goes across the abdominal cavity. The word transverse means across. The descending colon is on the left side of the body. Feces move downward in this section. The rectum is a pouch near the bottom of the digestive tract. It can expand to store feces. And the anus is the opening at the very end of the digestive tract. Here's where the small intestine joins onto the large intestine. There is a valve right here that can open to let chyme pass from the small intestine into the large intestine. Now we'll imagine some chyme near the exit point of the small intestine. When the chyme is at this point, almost all of its nutrients have been absorbed into the bloodstream by the small intestine. What remains is almost all undigestible material. Now we'll zoom in a bit. The chyme moves from the small intestine into the cecum. Now we'll zoom out a bit. Peristalsis helps move this material through the large intestine. It moves very slowly. It can take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to get completely through. Unlike the small intestine, the large intestine does not have villi, the tiny folds on its inside surface. Not much absorption of nutrients takes place in the large intestine, so it does not need to have a large surface area like the small intestine has. As the chyme moves through the colon, it loses most of its water, which passes into blood vessels in the wall of the intestine where it enters the bloodstream. If we watch this again, we see that the chyme shrinks as it loses water. It also becomes more solid. As it makes its way through the large intestine, continuing to lose water and become more solid, its name changes to feces. The feces travel down the descending colon toward the rectum. Remember this actually takes place much more slowly than is shown here. But there's something else we haven't looked at yet. Imagine some chyme as it's making its way through the large intestine. We'll take a closer look at this small area here. The large intestine has tons of bacteria, many different kinds including E. coli. They break down some of the substances that could not be broken down by the rest of the digestive system. And they manufacture some of their own, including vitamins B1, B2, B3, B7, B9, as well as vitamin K, needed to help our blood clot. Along with water, these important vitamins pass into blood vessels in the wall of the large intestine and are absorbed into the bloodstream. In addition, some minerals extracted from our food by bacteria also enter the bloodstream. We'll take a close look at this area again. As well as producing vitamins, bacteria in the large intestine carry out fermentation, which produces gases. The main gases produced by bacteria are carbon dioxide, or CO2, and methane, or CH4. These gases can build up pressure in the large intestine, causing discomfort. Having excess gas in the intestine is called flatulence. 
The feces that remain after food has gone through the large intestine make their way to the rectum. As hours pass and more digestion occurs, more feces enter the rectum, and it expands to store them. The opening at the bottom of the digestive tract is the anus. It has a ring of muscle around it called the anal sphincter, which can open and close the anus. When the rectum is full, the anus opens and contractions push the feces out. In this way, the body eliminates solid wastes. <laughs>